Hi, welcome back to the Gapster channel. I'm Gabby. I'm going to talk today about the TDA1541A DAC chip. This is a vintage DAC chip that was introduced roughly between 1988 and 1998. And uh, it's still today considered one of the best DAC chips. It's because it just sounds so natural, musical, and not so digital. And uh, it doesn't mean that it's tamed or like the high frequencies are low or uh, muted or anything like that. Not really. It just has this very open sound and it's very uh, holographic. You could really hear like a nice uh, imaging on when you're listening to it. And the musicality all together makes it sound so special. And it just makes you at ease when you're listening to, to something like that, especially when it's done right. For those of you who have been building my Gapster TD1 DAC, I think you just realize now what I have been talking about. I've had quite a bit of success with it so far, and I have nothing but good uh, feedback from everybody. Everybody seems to be loving it and, uh, and, and doing well with it. So that's, I feel very encouraged. But there's still an issue is where do you find a good DAC chip? Because they're not all the same, sadly. They're all good, but some are better than others and some are not good at all. And yet when you're buying something, you have no clue what are you going to get. You could get any of them. Could be really bad, could be really good. And uh, often even the people selling them have no idea if they're good or not. Some will tell you they've been tested and they seem they plugged them in into some sort of a, a little DAC uh, contraption and they made some sound and they can say, well, they're working. Uh, it doesn't mean they're going to sound great. Uh, so let's just do a quick re review first is uh, when you're getting a DAC chip, there's some numbers on the DAC chip and there have been a lot of uh, fake ones on the market as well and uh, just go through that a little bit. But the main thing when you're looking at a DAC chip is you are going to look at the a stamp that has a code. And often it will say, for example, HSH9704 uh, or something like that. And what does that mean is that the three letters, uh, for example, HSH in this case, the first letter is where it's been uh, produced. The second letter is where it's been assembled and the third letter is where it's been tested. H stands for Holland and S stands for Taiwan. And these are the most uh, common one, but there's also B for Germany, there's J for France and there's a, and, and so forth. So it's important to look at to see where the, some say some of the Taiwanese chips are uh, made certain dates were better than others and there's a whole lots of controversies and, and uh, talk about it. And then you've got the date so it tells you the first two letters are the year so if it says 8804 means it was designed it was made in 1988 and the week is the fourth week of the year. So that's in a nutshell it gives you all that information. There is a lot more information on uh, Dutch Audio Classic uh, website and uh, also the Lampizator website. I'm going to put those two specific websites in the description below. These are people that spent a lot of time uh, working on these chips. They know them a lot. They have contributed a lot to that chip and to the knowledge. And we all have to thank them a lot for actually making us aware of the chip and its history and its involvement. For the last three, four years, I've been buying different chips from here and there, always seeking that ultimate chip because I have tested a few and I found out that whatever you hear, some of it is true, but some of it isn't. And the ultimate test is your ears and listening to them. Uh, just because they're supposed to be an S1 chip or this kind of chip, or an R1 is bad and that one is good, that's not really true. There is some truth to it, but not always uh, true. And uh, so you leave us with really all confused and uh, what, sh what should we get? So I've been buying a whole bunch of uh, chips over the years and uh, slowly testing them here and there, listening to them. And now that I have my Gapster TD1 DAC, which is very revealing, combined with a very revealing system that I have, 
and my good trained ears, I was able now to distinguish different uh, chips very quickly. I have a few songs, I can listen to them, and I can just, within basically one minute, I can tell you if this chip is great or not. And uh, you could test them and, and do that, uh, unless you have very high sophisticated testing instruments, that's not going to tell you much. And often the testing, you're only testing one channel at a time. You're not, when you listen to them, you're listening at both of them. And this is how you can tell if this chip is holographic. Those tests are not going to tell you if the chip is very holographic or not, if the imaging on it is great. Imaging and holography are two different things. Imaging is when you can pinpoint an instrument into that uh, stereo image and holographicness. And the holography is more when it feels like a 3D, three-dimensional uh, sound that's coming at you. It's almost like when you're in a church, for example, listening to a band, and that's kind of the difference. And I also made a video where I tested 16 chips and, uh, and I, I wrote down all my observations and all that and I could tell which chips was better than other. I graded them and, and also I've been selling a few of them on my website. Uh, I have actually some uh, just released uh, recently. So if you want to check my website, you can go ahead and check it out. But no, I'm not in the business of trying to sell uh, DAC chips. These are some, I have so many, I need to get rid of a whole bunch of them. I need to narrow it down. I just I need to simplify my life. I'm at a stage of my life where I can't be uh, I know I, I collect so many CD players, so many amplifiers, I, I just need to send down the herd and, and make things a little, my life a little bit simpler. So I'm selling a whole bunch of my TDA chips and uh, you might find some really good bargains there. The good thing about them is they're all being tested. I've listened to them, all of them. I've graded them in different categories. You can buy some really cheap ones or some very expensive ones and it's up to you what you'd like to get. But we're not here to talk about this as much as I'm trying to tell you what to watch for and what you should look for. Couple things, if you're looking for a good DAC chips, to, uh, to, to things that I've learned over the last three years. Number one, avoid of all costs buying anything, any DAC chip from AliExpress. It's a recipe for disasters. Uh, you cannot basically uh, put any uh, uh, bad feedback on their site. So they have really no morals. They will sell you anything. They will say something and they'll sell you something else. I have nothing but problems buying chips from AliExpress. Most of them ended up in the bin. Uh, the second one is the, uh, the our next source would be uh, something from a uh, uh, local market. If you could find some old CD players sold on the local market, these seem to be some of the best finds. And then you've got eBay. eBay is mostly, yeah, it's not, you know, there's some good ones and some lots of okay ones. They all seem to work, but not so great. Uh, I've bought a whole bunch of eBay and I have some of them on my site as well. Uh, I, you listen to them, they sound okay, they're, they're, like, they're like good, and, uh, but then they're not just something missing about them. They're just not the greatest uh, sounding chips. Um, and some of them fail, some of them overheat, and uh, some of them arrive dead, what we call uh, DOA, dead on arrival. And, uh, but the majority do work, but just, just don't sound so great. And then you get lucky with the odd ones where they do sound great. So you end up, you know, you think you're buying them for cheap, but you have to buy maybe 10 of them to, to get one good one. So that one good one is costing you a fortune because now you get 10 not so great ones that what are you going to do with them? Well, there is use for them is often when we're setting up a system, you need to, you don't want to gamble with a very expensive chip because I've burnt a few myself and I've burnt some really good ones and I cried a lot. So you don't want to go there and because things happen, no matter how good you are, you reverse polarity, you put the chip in the wrong order, just switch it by one pin forward or back, 
it's toast. Not only it's toast, your other parts around it are toast as well. And that's a very, like usually it's a thousand dollar mistake. And it's not, it's not fun and it's very painful when that happens. So you want to buy a very inexpensive chip to do all the testing. And this is what these chips will be ideal for. So if you want to get a chip just to test things around, get one of those eBay chips. They're perfect for that. And maybe you'll be lucky and you get a good one. Uh, the next level up is from that is to buy some old CD players. And uh, there's two stories here. You don't want to get a really uh, nice CD player and just throw it out and just to take the chip out of it, that's really a disgrace to humanity and to the vintage. It's like buying a heritage home and tearing it down. So you don't want to do that. But if that CD player is dead, then it makes, it makes, you know, it makes sense to actually salvage the parts and that's salvaging those uh, TDA chips out of it. Now I have to caution you, is buying a, uh, a dead uh, CD player, that doesn't mean the chip is perfect. The chip could be completely dead. The chip could be somewhat fried or somewhat damaged. It might not appear so at first glance, but as you listen to it, you'll realize it doesn't sound so great. Or it could be that the chip is not so great either. Even back then, all these CD players, that doesn't mean they have great DAC chips in them. They again vary from one extreme to the other. So now you gotta buy three, four CD, dead CD players to maybe get one good chip. And so that one chip is now it's costing you $1,200 versus, you know. Uh, so it, it gets very costly and it's just very frustrating. You end up having so many CD players uh, sitting on your shelf. So this is the moral of the story. So. So there is no really hum, no, no reason to, 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 to do that. You could, sometimes if you're lucky, you can find some audio files where they have a couple chips and they will tell you that, yes, this, if they're honest enough, they'll tell you this is a good sounding chip, this is not. But this is rare and it doesn't happen uh, very often. Now I have to tell you also that the differences between them is not huge. It's not like one is so amazing and one is garbage. No. There, I classify them in four categories uh, or maybe five. One is like complete, you know, they sound, they make music, they sound okay, they sound like muffled and muted. So these are, I would call them like really test chips, they're like bare beginning. The second is like the common eBay chips you see here and there. They sound decent, they sound okay, but uh, not so brilliant. And they're great for testing, like I said, and, and for first time uh, builders and, and stuff like that. And then you've got the next three categories, which are you have some really decent chips that sound so great. That doesn't mean they have to be R1 chips or S1 chips or crowns or anything like that. And then you've got um, the uh, step above, which is the fourth level, which I would be. Uh, these on, are usually sound very good. They're usually, uh, they don't have to be S1 chip, but they can be. They don't have to be R1 chips and they can be. I will go on the R chip in a second here. So these could be any chips. And then the first category, usually these are S1 and S2, a double crown and single crown. In general, they are good chips. I have to say 80% are good, but not all of them. So you could have a non-crown S chip sounding way better than a regular chip. I have to caution you about the crowns on the chips. Uh, this is where most of the fakeness is. There have been, been, they are so good at stamping crowns. So they'll take a regular chip that, no, the chip could be excellent or it could be bad. No one knows, but they stamp crowns on it and now they're selling it as an S1, one single crown or even double crown sometime. And this is where it's hard to tell. It's becoming so hard to tell if these actually are real S1 crown chips or not. And, uh, but in general, I would say they are not and they are fake. Uh, maybe the chip may not be fake, but the crowns are. Uh, so this is where listening to any chip is gonna be your best uh, guide to pick the right one. 
Also beware of uh, sometimes they're selling a, a chip that say, oh, this is from a CD player and you'll see the CD player and but the chip is on actually is on a socket. So it's actually pressed on a socket. Most CD players back then, they did not have sockets. You see, the chips were actually soldered to the, uh, to the PCB. So often these are fake. Um, these are not true. Uh, basically, that chip is not the one that came originally with that particular CD player. And you got to be uh, uh, cautious about that as well. And then you've got those R chip. It's a huge controversy on that. And I've, I've lived it, I've experienced it. Uh, my first chip, that I only had one chip at the very beginning of my testing. I loved that chip. And this is where I, how I fell in love. And that was a great R chip. I guess I was lucky and I had a great R chip. This is my, where my journey started. And uh, one day I fried my chip and I cried over it for a couple of days. And since then, I, I bought maybe about 10 R chips and I only got lucky maybe once since then. And the majority of R chips are okay. Uh, there's about 30% are really good and about 10% are exceptional. And that's why the R chip uh, controversy is you hear sometimes they say that they are really good and some they say they are really bad and that's why. I don't know why, how, who, who actually started grading those with R. Uh, I think there will be people that did it at the beginning are different than the people that did it at the end. It's complete mess. But again, listen to them. That's the only way you're going to find out. On my website, uh, gapster.ca, I have a whole bunch of chips now again, uh, because I, have a, I need to send down my collection. And uh, so I've got a whole bunch and they'll be ideal for there's some from the low grade ones to the high grade ones. I have listened to these chips uh, many times, not just once, except the really bad ones. I didn't bother listening to them too much, but the uh, third and fourth category, these ones, I've listened to them a few times at different times of the day as well. And uh, just to make sure that they sound good and they are good. Uh, so if you buy one of these, you're guaranteed to get something decent. And uh, I think even if it's even if you have, it's always good to still buy a test chip. Like I said, to try at the beginning, use a test chip, and then use a good one. Also gives you an idea to compare what what the differences are. Not a huge difference again, but there are small differences, mostly in the uh, 3D imaging and the mid range, and also just the imaging. So these are three uh, characteristic of these chips. Uh, I also need to thank, I have a very, very generous donor who uh, has been sitting on some chips for many, over 20 years, he said he had those chips. And he finally feels like he wants to do something good with them. So he donated them to, the, to my channel uh, to help me out. But I just feel like I need to reciprocate the gesture. So I did uh, give him actually back uh, one of my fully assembled uh, Gapster TD1 DAC for him to experience uh, hopefully the sound. But I still uh, owe, uh, owe him because I, uh, I, uh, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do with these particular chips is trying to donate the, a good portion of it to charity. So kind of like uh, follow his wishes to make good with these chips. And uh, these are very, uh, these chips are actually rebranded. And what does that mean? It means we means basically they were they are actually legitimate chips. Because remember, these are he's been sitting on these for 20 years. That was way before the counterfeit start appearing. So someone erased the whatever was labeled that, and they were stamped with uh, JSS. So J means they were actually. Uh, produced in, uh, in France, which is a very rare one. And uh, S means uh, assembled in uh, Taiwan and S is tested in Taiwan as well. So, uh, but he thinks that these possibly may have been a non-A chip, uh, but when I tested them and when I listened to them, they sound and they behave exactly like A chips. And not only that, they sound amazing. 
Now, not all of them sounded amazing. Uh, he gave me quite a few. Uh, some of them sounded amazing and some of them were okay. I'm selling the good ones that sounded really good and I have them listed on my website. I have a few more and uh, I'm trying to basically, these sounded almost like an S1 chip, uh, to, if I would say. Uh, and like I said, these are rare and there's a little bit of mystery about them. But as I have learned over the last few months is don't listen to what's written on the chip, where it came from, how many crowns it's got on it or ours. Listen to them. That's the only way is by listening to it. Your only way you're going to tell if that's a good chip or not. Even when you test those chips, the difference is that some will say, you know, noise level is 97 and the other one, the R, the crown one is 96. So, you know, that one dB is going to make that big difference. But when you listen to them, there is a very good difference. Especially when you compare the really good chips to the really, uh, uh, you know, beginner, like the, what I call test chips, then you can see the difference. It's like night and day. Especially if you have a good system, if your system is dialed right, like if your speakers are very well set up, because I, I sometimes, People will say, well, I bought, you know, a $20,000 DAC and a $20,000 amp and I'm not seeing, you know, a great sound. But often you, you still need to set up your speakers right. Your room's got to be decent. Uh, you know, your source is going to be decent. You can have, if, you're bad, if your source is bad, you're just amplifying that badness. So again, it's all about that whole synergy. Don't just buy the $10,000 cable, a power cable and expect your system going to sound great. You know, there's, you know there's, a, there's more to it. Every part of your system has to be good. And this is when you start to hear those differences and, and, and feel them. So if you don't have a good revealing system, you may not hear what I'm talking about. And you might find that the eBay chip sounds almost as good as a really good chip. So for those, if you have this kind of system, I would strongly suggest you buy the, an eBay level chip. Or maybe what some of these chips, they're like on my third category. These are really good chips at really good value. They've been tested. They sound great. We often want to buy the, you know, the, the S1 double crown chip and spend, you know, $1,000 on it. The difference between that and some of those three third category chips is not that big. And you'll be amazed sometimes how you'll be very happy with the sound. Even those chips will sound better than any ESS or AKM chips that you buy. And lastly, I want to thank my, all the people that bought my Gapster TD1 DAC and sent me uh, nice messages telling me how great they love the sound and how happy they were uh, with it. I had a couple of people that were struggling. I guess they don't know much how to build things and they kind of were over their heads, but I did manage to help them out and I'm still helping a couple out. And we actually, I managed to pretty much so far getting them all to uh, to reach, uh, to listen to uh, where they need to be, still working on a couple of them. But uh, the majority were able to build them themselves and uh, some did some fabulous jobs, way better than I have been doing. And they reported some uh, really good reports like sounding bears on some very expensive DAC like the Hollow May, the Denifrips Terminator, uh, some of the DACs that cost ten and twenty thousand dollars. And they seem to like the Gapster TD1 uh, better. So that uh, gives you uh, something. And also, I cannot take all the credit. My DAC sounds good. Also, because of the, like I said about the source, the source is Ian Canada Streamer and his uh, power supplies and all that stuff. All this comes together at the end to produce such great uh, results. So it's not just about one person, it's about the whole collective of everything. And without the TDA 1541A chip that was introduced by Philips, uh, we wouldn't have that particular sound. I'm going to put in the corner here my first video about the Gapster TD1 DAC and how it started. There's many videos after that. In this corner, there'll be uh, 10 holographic songs that you can listen to so you can 
hear what I'm talking about. A speaker in the middle if you'd like to subscribe to the channel. My uh, website is in the description below if you want to see which chips I'm selling and also my Patreon if you'd like to join it and help the channel uh, in its journey. Uh, my journey is to help people learn about DIY audio and feel comfortable to build things themselves. Take care and I hope to see you again.